Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hong Kong UST SU Bible Education and Exploration Society monthly seminar. Uh, I'm Caroline Wong, an honorary member of Hong Kong UST B Society. Welcome. And tonight, it was great pleasure that we invited the professor from Yale University, Professor Han Zhou, uh, who has been teaching at Yale University for 20 years, and he has been a Christian for more than three decades. He's currently the William Norton Professor in Electrical Engineering. Um, we look forward to hearing from him his uh, story of light. Hope we all can be enlightened. Thank you, uh, Professor Han. And without any further ado, let me turn the floor to Professor Han. Welcome. The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, thank you very much for, for the uh, invitation. You can hear me, right? Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, yeah, it, it's, I, I really uh, appreciate the opportunity um, to, to share uh, of my, my experience and my, probably my technical field and, and uh, uh, well, to take this opportunity to um, just as, 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 as one who, uh, who is a Christian and who is, has been in the science and the technology area for, for at least uh, three decades. So um, to, to share some of my, my, my thoughts. Um, so the, the title uh, is, um, is a, a story of light. And uh, uh, I noticed uh, Professor Du uh, a, a few months ago already gave a very wonderful seminar or a Bible seminar on, uh, on light. And from a more a physicist point of view, and I'm an electrical engineer, so uh, I, well, my I will talk about the, my research uh, in the area of uh, optoelectronics. And the second part of uh, uh, this uh, this title is to enlighten all that they may see, and I will share some of my own experiences and share some good news. And maybe we can okay, let's begin. So I will quickly introduce myself very quickly. I grew up in Taiwan. Uh, I, I, I graduated from National Taiwan University in 1986. Uh, so you can guess my age. And I, I served in, um, in, in an army mandatory service for two years. And then in 1988, uh, I went to, or I came to United States for graduate study. Uh, I went to, uh, well, I, I, I didn't go to the West Coast or East Coast. Uh, I, I, I arrived uh, in a state called Indiana. It's a mid, Midwest in the heartland of United States. It's very flat. And in that part of the United States, it's all cornfield, uh, flat and boring. Uh, you can drive for um, hours. Uh, then with no change of, uh, of landscape of scene. And uh, well, in, in the middle of almost nowhere, uh, I, I, I spent uh, uh, four years at this uh, uh, called Purdue University. It is a science, it's an engineering school. So for those of you uh, who are at uh, yeah, the, the, the science and technology field, uh, hopefully you have heard of this university. And I spent another three years there uh, after PhD, uh, working with my advisor as a visiting professor. Uh, so that's actually, that's also where I started to meet with Christian. That's, that, that's when I, I, I turned to the Lord, I, I received the Lord. Um, so in, 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 in 1996, uh, I moved from Indiana to the Southwest part of uh, United States uh, in a state called New Mexico. Uh, th that part of the country is all um, desert. So Southwest of United States is all very dry desert. So um, in the middle of a desert, uh, I start to work in a, a, a nuclear weapons lab. It's part of the uh, US Department of Energy and I became a federal employee. Uh, so this lab is called Sandia National Labs, and I was there for five years. 
uh, as, a, as a staff scientist and do, doing semiconductor research. And uh, in 2001, so exactly 20 years ago, uh, our family uh, moved to, to the Northeast. You can see the, 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 the blue line. And so, or, so we arrived in a state uh, called Connecticut. Uh, we are about uh, 90 minutes from New York City. Uh, so uh, that, that's when I started to teach uh, at Yale University. The, 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 the city is called New Haven. Uh, it's a quite, quite beautiful uh, campus. And uh, I, I hope uh, uh, if, if anyone of you ever um, get to visit uh, the Northeast part of the United States, you're very welcome to, to, to Yale and please contact me. So uh, I, I, I will begin to, to first to, to maybe to, to, to describe, to discuss uh, my general research area and uh, to, to talk about its uh, impact to society. And I will try to be uh, at a high, high level, a lot of things to summarize. Um, basically, uh, uh, I, I study semiconductor uh, optoelectronics and uh, I use this chart ju just to show that uh, um, in, a, in a human civilization uh, across a different region, different, uh, different years for the past uh, 6,000, 7,000 years, uh, our, our understanding, our knowledge, and our ways to manipulate, to master materials are very, very important. A lot of the civilizations are characterized by um, by by the by, by by the kind of materials they 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 master. So starting with uh, as simple as a stone age or pottery, and then we can go to bronze age, and and, and China is especially known for the early uh, uh, say invention uh, of uh, bronze, and then there's a glass glass blower and then to porcelain. And so China, again, leads the culture uh, in, 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 in the very fine uh, uh, porcelain and, and the, 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 the manufacturing. And to much more recent after the 1700s and then polymer, uh, uh, polymer fibers and the different kind of uh, metallurgy dealing with metals, uh, stainless steel and so forth. And what I really want to say is, uh, uh, to, to, uh, if you look at the upper right corner, around 1940 or so, before most of us, including me, was born, uh, human, our human um, society entered into what's called electronic materials age. So um, electronic materials, uh, that, that's uh, the general area of my, my study. Uh, so basically, these are semiconductors. So, so if we look at this uh, very complicated this, uh, 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 periodic table, um, well, I'm not a chemist, okay, so don't worry. Uh, I, I'm, I just try to briefly map out some elements. The lower left part of the periodic table, these are all metals, these are conductors. And the upper right generally are gas, different gases and the insulators. So in between these two insulator and the metals, uh, there's a uh, yellow, yellow region. That is uh, what the, these elements can be used to make semiconductors. And uh, probably most famous one would be silicon and the germanium. These are or were the earliest and, and probably most known semiconductors so uh, the history of silicon uh, begin, began or opened up the, the electronic material age. Uh, this has, this probably arguably uh, can, can, be, can be said to be the, the most important invention for the 20th century, last century. Uh, you see this, uh, this chart from 1947, uh, the discovery of semiconductor, not semiconductor, transistor, one big transistor in the upper left. And then the lower left, uh, Jack Kilby put uh, several transistors on a very crude 
silicon chip. And that's a lower left. That's the first IC. He later won Nobel Prize for this. And then we're able to put more and more transistors integration, integration. And then to the right, you see this Intel Core i7 that's in the laptop that I, I'm using now. So with the billions of uh, uh, semi uh, uh, transistors. So, so this is uh, the background of electronic material. And uh, in fact, uh, now this is so important. Um, what, two weeks ago or less than two weeks ago, this is a picture and from the NBC News that, uh, well, our, our, uh, our president, <laughs> President Biden is holding this, uh, this wafer and he say, wow, this is a life and death for the national security of the United States. Uh, so th th this is uh, a kind of uh, uh, electronic material that we all use. But, but this is not strictly my, my area. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in light emitting, uh, light coming out from semiconductor. So this, this, kind, this field that we call optoelectronics, before semiconductors, we, we, we obtain light from uh, mostly uh, the, 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 the electronic transition, or we can say gas discharge here, uh, I showed some gases, neon, neon argon, and uh, uh, hydrogen. In this gases, molecules, atoms, they have uh, electronic levels. So these this electronic levels, uh, then when electrons are excited to high energy states and then come down, the energy can be released uh, into different beautiful light. So this was before semiconductor. Um, so what, what uh, well, I would say there's a field trying to combine uh, microelectron semiconductor material with light. And this is what we call optoelectronics. And so in this, in this talk, uh, I, I will, I, I will just give two examples. And one, the first one, I feel this uh, is a gallium Mars and I laser diode. And this, uh, this is before uh, my research and that impacted our society. I, I, I'll say something about this. And my own research is in the second one. It's a, it's a, 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 a LEDs, light emitting diodes. And uh, I, I I'll just, uh, Maybe quickly uh, go into uh, the, the, um, yeah this uh, uh, this presentation. So uh, how to extract how to uh, produce uh, light from semiconductor? Uh, beginning with the uh, silicon and the germanium, I, I circled here. It turns out when you consider silicon and the germanium, they have electronic levels in these materials, but these levels, this uh, upper level and lower level, I show here in this box. If you plot them in what we call momentum space, you, 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 you plot it in this coordinate, these two levels, they are not aligned. So we call this indirect semiconductors. And typically, indirect semiconductors do not interact, do not uh, release light that, that well. And uh, but uh, near this region, for example, if we use gallium and the arsenic, this element I circled in, in blue, you let them uh, react. Then uh, this gallium arsenide, the, 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 this compound, their energy levels are aligned. And uh, this is called direct semiconductor. And for direct semiconductor, then you can expect they, they could produce uh, light or photons. So this is uh, uh, the beginning of uh, optoelectronics. Scientists become very interested to, uh, to, um, to work on, uh, say, gallium arsenide. And on the left, this is a, a more complicated, let, let, me, uh, let me get a laser pointer. So uh, a good thing about semiconductor is by introducing impurities or foreign atoms into the host semiconductor, you can selectively uh, put electrons into the upper level 
or into the lower level. This, these are different uh, regions. And when, when you join these regions together, for example, the light green and the, the light blue are joined together, you apply voltage. Then you can obtain, you can expect to have a light coming out. And this is the basic principle of a diode. And uh, this, uh, the, the ability, the efficiency for this conversion from electron coming down to generate light turns out depends very much on the uh, the perfection on the on, on, on the the material quality or we say perfection. So on the right, I, I just show a uh, this is a very very high magnification high resolution electron micros microscope image showing okay, we have a a, a diode, n-type region, p-type region, and scientists and engineers spend a, a lot of time trying to arrange atoms in this, uh, in, at this junction region and to achieve high perfection, even to, pre, to, to, to control very, very precisely. In fact, this is uh, how, or how or what I spend my graduate school, uh, four years plus a postdoc, almost seven years, just around an apparatus that looks like this image. Um, it's uh, a lot of stainless steel. Uh, we call this molecular beam epitaxy. Uh, don't worry, uh, but in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, even to today, this apparatus is still considered uh, probably one of the most precise and most uh, powerful tool to what? To put atoms, one atom followed by another atom in a most uh, precise way. You can have a, a surface, you start to put atoms where you, you, you want. The goal is that uh, you, can, you, you, you can produce light in, in, in a most uh, efficient way. So this area, it can be considered uh, almost like a uh, crystal growth. So I, I study light emission, and the, but at the same time, I study how to arrange atoms to do crystal growth. This uh, has been uh, one of my primary uh, interests. And I will just say a little bit about the impact of this particular uh, field. Uh, this is a gallium arsenide. So um, we're talking about in the, in the 70s, early 70s, uh, that uh, uh, scientists made a very, very high quality gallium, gallium arsenide uh, PN junction. And then this PN junction emit infrared light. I'm not sure if you have used, uh, say, laser pointer, right? I have a laser pointer, but this is not a real one. Real laser pointer, a lot of those are made of gallium arsenide emitting the red, but the earliest one is the infrared. And uh, this turns out to be very, very useful. Um, one of the probably most, most important uh, application is uh, it happened to be a combination with a separate field that we call optical fiber. And the optical fiber, I think uh, uh, for, for, those, for those of you, uh, who, who are in Hong Kong, you, you, I'm sure most of you know the inventor of, uh, of this optical fiber is uh, Professor, uh, Professor Kao, right? Professor Gao Kun, uh, who, who won Nobel Prize uh, probably 20 years ago. So around in the, in the 70s, uh, scientists, in, including uh, Dr. Kao, they uh, developed ways to prepare, to purify, to engineer the fiber. So this fiber can be very, very long. Um, it's made of silica. And uh, the marriage of these two inventions, uh, what, what do I mean marriage? Because these fibers, they can conduct, they can transmit light with very, very low loss for hundreds of miles, thousands of miles. Uh, but because these fibers are very tiny, normally you cannot easily couple to feed the light into the end. But the semiconductor laser happened to have uh, all the right characteristic 
to feed the light in there. So when these two are combined together, what you have is uh, a very broad band, high capacity, we call information highway, or now it's called uh, internet. And so uh, if we look at uh, uh, the electromagnetic wave spectrum, uh, don't, it, uh, this, this, this chart has a lot of information. I'll just tell you before, um, before the, uh, this, uh, the, the uh, laser diode optical fiber, uh, this, the internet, majority of this telecommunication was done using radio wave or microwave, the frequency. Okay, th this, this meter here is a frequency. It's 10 to the eighth, 10 to the ninth megahertz, gigahertz range. So that's the frequency of light. I remember Professor Du also talk about the frequency wavelength in his talk. And but once you use laser diode together with optical fiber, uh, the infrared light has a much higher frequency, 10 to the 14th. You, you get an instant boost of uh, say six orders of magnitude almost in the, in the frequency, in the channel capacity. And uh, because of this, um, in fact, all of a sudden, the bandwidth in increased uh, tremendously in, 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 the, in the 80s uh, or late 80s, early 90s. So uh, what is the, I just used this slide to show you the impact and I, uh, I will tell you some stories here. Uh, here it shows, we have the world map, all the dark, uh, these are the, 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 the co different uh, continents, right? The uh, US is here, China is here, uh, Hong Kong is here, and then you have uh, South, South America, Africa, and so forth. Uh, so now, beginning from 88, 89, uh, engineers start to connect these different continents with undersea uh, submarine uh, fiber cable, like the one shown here. So these cables, uh, because of the much, much higher capacity, now they connect all the, all, 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 all the continents and even, even the tra transcontinental connection. And the, in fact, now uh, every, every email, every text you send, uh, if, even say right now, every sentence I said is transmitted through this, this, this fiber with very high capacity. So we are connected by, by, by light. And uh, for my personal experience, uh, I just, uh, well, I'm, I'm in my 50s. And then so uh, I, I just tell you some, some stories so you have an idea about the, the progress in communication. Uh, when I was little, when I was in elementary school, uh, I, I was in Taiwan, and my uh, my father he, he worked for uh, Taiwanese government. He had to take a business trip to United States. That that assignment, every assignment is two years. So he need to go to United States for two years and then return. And during the two years, we wrote letters to him, like like I show here. And then one way is, a, is, a, is, is 14 days. And then he received a letter, he wrote something and then sent it back to us. So every month we complete this one round trip and then we try to write and then you can just write one page because you cannot be too heavy. Otherwise it would be very expensive. That was uh, early on. And uh, when I came to United States uh, 30 some years ago, 1988, 1989, I think it's uh, uh, Carolyn and, 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 and David, uh, they, they would remember. At that time, there's a microwave satellite-based communication. I can make uh, phone calls uh, every week. I call home, Taiwan. The, the, the rate, the, the, the telephone rate is uh, at that time is about uh, uh, one US dollar per minute. That is the rate to call uh, international phone call. And uh, every week I call maybe once uh, 30 minutes or so. So every month I spend 
about uh, 120 to 150 US dollars on the international phone call. And uh, my monthly income at that time as a graduate student at Purdue is about 500 or $550. So 30% of my uh, income goes to communication. And, and but tonight, we, we are here connected high bandwidth video, all this information essentially free. And you can see the, 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 the impact of this one, just one invention uh, uh, in, in this, uh, the, 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 the human technology. Um, okay, so now I will transition to, uh, to, the, uh, to my second part. I break my presentation into uh, two slides. Uh, you, you can still hear me, right? So let me launch the second part here. Um, basically, on uh, this part, I want to talk about the second uh, invention, and this invention is about uh, uh, lighting and uh, um, lighting, because for us human beings, light is, we, we rely so much on our vision. So uh, we, well, we see a lot of things. Uh, we, we, we will pay attention to what we, we see, we receive visual information. Um, so um, in, uh, when we talk about optoelectronics, uh, the second, I would say, the greatest uh, uh, innovation is related to lighting. Uh, I, I'll quickly go over the history of lighting. The most primitive state of lighting is through the burning, through fire. O oil, gas burning, like shown here, not safe, very low efficiency. And the, the second generation of lighting is, uh, is through heat. And this is a filament-based Thomas Edison type of uh, invention. When the filament is heated, then uh, you, you, you can have, a, you, you can have a, a black body radiation. This is what we call incandescent uh, light bulbs. I'm sure all of you have seen this, this light bulb. And the third generation is, uh, this is due to the electron uh, transition. Yes, based on gas, so compact fluorescent uh, light bulbs here. It has uh, mercury uh, vapor in there. The discharge of mercury will give you UV light and can be, can be converted. And these are, uh, these are the third generation uh, that, that's before semiconductor. And uh, about uh, 50 years ago, some scientists started to consider, is it possible for semiconductor to be used in lighting? <clears throat> for semiconductor to be used in lighting, the, the right semiconductor has to emit, not in the infrared like gallium arsenide here, but it needs to emit at the higher energy end of the visible spectrum. It should be UV, or purple, or maybe at, at least the blue light in this region. And it turns out it's very, very difficult to accomplish this goal. Um, we look at the semiconductors. I already talked about the silicon and the gallium arsenide. About uh, 50 years ago or 60 years ago, um, scientists identified this, this, this compound is gallium, react with nitrogen. We call this gallium nitride and and this this semiconductor is is has a good potential to emit in the purple in the, in the blue uh, but but turns out uh, this is a, a very very difficult task I just use this chart to 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 show you uh, roughly the history and this chart shows the number this is the chronological years from late 60s to now. And the yellow curve measures the size, the, the success of gallium nitride. This is a number of publication with the keyword of gallium nitride for us doing research. When there are many papers, that means this is a very active, vibrant, successful field. Gallium nitride started in late 60s. 
and uh, United States started this light blue shows United States was very innovative. West Coast, East Coast started to research this material. Uh, however, it didn't uh, uh, reach, uh, it didn't go very far. Uh, the field went into a stagnant dormant state about, uh, you can see 20 papers per year publication. That is a very, very small community. In, in fact, the US government uh, decides to uh, decide to stop the, the research no more because it's too hard. But before it terminate the, this uh, the, 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 this field, uh, some Japanese scientists uh, visited the U.S. and decided to continue. So uh, basically, during this period of time, uh, ten years or so, a few Japanese scientists working on this and eventually led to breakthroughs in late 80s. And then this field started to grow since this is a semi-log, right? This is a logarithmic chart. So it grows exponentially and it expanded 100 times. And I know some of you are uh, uh, students here. So I will tell you a little bit about the breakthrough and hopefully that, that will be an encouragement to those of you who are in grad school or in, 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 or in undergrad. Um, so gallium nitride turns out it's, uh, it's very difficult to, to, uh, to, to prepare. This is a hard, hard material, uh, if, uh, much harder than diamond. Diamond is e it's easier to grow. You can have an artificial diamond. Turns out gallium nitride, it's a, because of its chemical property, very diff difficult to prepare in big size. And the scientists try to do what we call thin film growth to, to try to prepare it on a gemstone called sapphire. And people spend uh, 20, 30 years and they couldn't succeed. Uh, one particular, uh, this, this graduate student, his name is Amano, Hiroshi Amano. This is uh, actually the, the slide. Right now, the slide I'm using is his slide uh, uh, from his Nobel Prize lecture. So he said during his master, when he was a master student, he tried the experiment 1500 times. He tried it one, 1500, not 15 times. He did it 1500 times of experiment, but to, to grow gallium nitride on this gemstone sapphire, it always leads with uh, bad material. So he himself said in his recount that uh, the life was very miserable. He, 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 he did the 1500 experiment. Every time the, 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 the sample, the material came out very rough, very just bad quality. And uh, because he didn't produce the desired result, he couldn't find a job and he had no hope. And then he need to continue to stay to become a PhD student. So that, that's what happened to him, but he continued. And the, during, the, uh, dur during his uh, early PhD time, one day he continued to do the experiment. During his ex experiment, the, the hardware, the apparatus he used had a failure. So there's a almost electrical uh, breakdown. So while the experiment was going on high temperature, temperature, drop to a very low temperature. And he quickly fixed, repaired the apparatus, and he decided to continue and to resume the experiment rather than aborting the experiment. And turns out that adjustment, that interruption made all the difference. And when he finished the experiment, he took the sample out and the sample looks uh, completely uh, beautiful, transparent. He had never seen gallium nitride in, in that form. And uh, he was so excited. And so, so it turns out um, this, 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 he, his uh, accidental, I would say almost ex accidental discovery of the need during experiment to drop the temperature from high temperature to a lower temperature, and then go back to high temperature later there's a big field, it's called two-step growth. And the, this, this two-step growth can help to prepare 
very high quality, beautiful gallium nitride. And uh, after that, uh, basically, um, sci the, 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 the scientists, they, they, and including myself, were able to make blue, blue LED wafers. And uh, this is a one example. This is on sapphire. And gallium nitride can emit very high efficiency uh, uh, blue light. And with, with, with this, with the blue, OK, on the, on the lower, uh, lower right, I show the spectrum. When you have a blue light, intense blue light, combined with a yellow phosphor that convert the light to have some green and the red and the, uh, green, red, and yellow, then, then you have a, like a white light. So pretty much solid state lighting is enabled by this uh, singular uh, uh, discovery. And so here it shows uh, in terms of the lighting, I, I talk about four generations, right? Four generations. And the, the vertical axis here is the efficiency of uh, converting from energy to light, this conversion efficiency. And for the past, uh, what, 200 years, we start with fire. Burning fire is very, very inefficient. Then, we go to the second generation with the filament, this uh, the incandescent, incandescent uh, the, the bulb. It's still not that efficient. It's a uh, what? If you read here, it's about four percent. So that means ninety six percent of the input electricity is converted to heat rather than uh, light. The fluorescent, the third generation, is much more, much more efficient, 20%, 18% or so. And uh, uh, with the use of gallium nitride solid state lighting, and you can you can now reach routinely 50%, 60%. And, and this has impacted the, the global, even the uh, we say the energy infrastructure here. And uh, now with, uh, with the, the gallium nitride, blue LEDs, it, it impacted the lighting as well as display uh, industry. Even, even tonight, uh, the devices you are using to participate in this, uh, in, 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 in this uh, seminar, uh, whether it's a, a desktop uh, the, the, the display or you're using, um, say, a mobile iPhone, iPad, most likely you have a gallium nitride blue LED, outdoor display, giant bulletin and display, and the lighting, architectural light, indoor lighting, automobile lighting, all this. So because of this, um, about five, six years ago, uh, several pioneer scientists, including uh, Professor Mano, who at the time of discovery was, uh, was a graduate student, they were recognized for Nobel Prize. So to me, it's uh, really a, a, a very, very, um, very, very interesting story. Uh, well, so I, I, I use this slide to sort of to uh, to, to summarize uh, the part of uh, more the technology uh, uh, discussion, science and technology discussion. And this is a satellite image. Uh, looking at, uh, well, here, look, uh, this is a Western Europe. You, you probably recognize some area. Uh, this is uh, the Italian and Peninsula. Uh, Berlin is here, Moscow is here, Northern Africa, and so forth. Uh, in fact, light is very much related to our activity, especially at, at, at night. Um, about 10 years ago, uh, two economists, they studied and they established a very interesting correlation between our utilization, our consumption of light and uh, the GDP, our economic uh, productivity. So uh, in fact, they studied for the past uh, 300 years, um, you, you can gauge the, the the vitality of, of any region, any society by of, by their usage of light. So we, we all need the light here. And for the past 300 years, 
the efficiency of lighting has increased 1,000 times. And uh, that, that's through science and engineering. I went through that four generation, efficiency went up 1,000 times. And the cost of energy to produce light uh, through the infrastructure producing is dropped by 100 times. So as a commodity, the cost of light has dropped by 100,000 times. It become very, very affordable. Uh, th th this is very remarkable. But when we look at this satellite image here, uh, you look at the background. Wow, this is a sunlight. This is a sunset of uh, Western Europe. So the background, in fact, is a very intense. When you con 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 consider, compare, contrast the, uh, the, the artificial man-made light with the natural light, then uh, you, you, you can't help but uh, wonder, but uh, really appreciate the provision from the creator. So I, I just put this, these numbers here, artificial light versus natural light. Uh, statistics, you, you, you do the math, you, you, you can come up with uh, the average power consumption, all kinds of power energy consumption added up 10 to the 12th watt. That's all, all, all the, uh, the, the, the 7 billion people uh, using everything together, 10 to the 12th watt. But the power of a sunlight that emitting every second is 10 to the 26 watt. So we really need to learn while we appreciate the, the advance in science and technology, we also need to consider and humble ourselves and to, to think, to, to, to appreciate that God as a creator who provides to us all this uh, uh, the, the, the abundant supplies, uh, light, water, and all these things we need, energy. So, so I, I, I think I was used about maybe another 10, 12 minutes and to, to share about the light in a more subjective way. And this is also related to my own experience. Um, I, I spoke a lot about the advance, the societal advance in science and technology. But uh, if we check our experience, we realize especially in terms of light, this is all, I, I, I was talking about more the physical realm uh, of, 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 the, of the lighting. But in fact, all of us could, uh, uh, we can uh, testify at some part or, or, or at some time of, uh, in our life, we, we feel we need an inward light. Uh, 33 years ago, when I first, uh, came to United States uh, almost immediately, as, as soon as the airplane landed in Indiana, I start to have a question. Was, uh, why am I doing this? That was my question. Um, in fact, that question persisted for maybe one year, at least six months. Uh, hourly, I was doing very well. Uh, I, I think academically, Research-wise, I, I, I was doing quite well, <clears throat> but I just wonder why many of us are, are, are studying hard to get a PhD degree. And I, I met uh, quite a few very prominent scientists, had, a, had the opportunity to, uh, well, to, to chat with them, to, 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 to eat a meal with them. When I interact with a lot of these uh, prominent scientific figures, I, I, I almost worship them. But uh, after the interaction, I just had a feeling that I can see a fast forward of my life for 30 years that, uh, well, I consider if I work hard, if I'm lucky, I could become one of them. But I start to feel very, very uh, not satisfied or, or actually worried. And I ask this question, is this all there is to my life? Is this all there is to life? And I, I just consider this, uh, uh, well, what, what, what happened after I die? And uh, where am I going afterwards? Where did I come from? And I consider 
the uh, our, our our human existence uh at that time i was in my 20s and then maybe we live 50 years 80 years maybe we can live up to 100 years but it's all very transient a a, a brief uh time so so what what is the point of of, of all of this and that, that actually was the time i was in, invited to home meetings to christians yeah at purdue university i i i i was forever uh grateful for 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 those invitations so we have a lot of uh, questions and that clearly indicate we need inward shining otherwise we'll be like this this person here walking in, in on the street but in the dark um in the bible i want to share this verse with you um this is in a book ecclesiastes uh chapter 3 uh verse 11 and it says god has made everything beautiful in its own time so God arranged all of our uh, environment, our things happen to us in its own time. There are good things, sometimes sorrowful things, and we, we, we get together and we, we, we say goodbye, and there are highs and lows, and the things come and things go. It seems very transient, but at the same time, it says God has put eternity in our heart. So I years later i realized wow i had a feel a, a, a something called eternity in me so the transient things it just uh, caused me a, a feeling of uneasiness and uh, in one of the footnotes it explained this eternity it says eternity is a divinely implanted sense of a purpose so um, for those of you who are still in school or, 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 or even already graduated, I want to tell you, all of us, within, within us, we have, a, we have been divinely implanted with a sense of purpose. We, we continue to ask, what is the point? What is the point? What is the purpose? And this, this purpose working through the ages, which nothing under the sun, nothing under the sun, but the God alone can satisfy. And uh, this is not just my, my own feeling 30 years ago. Later, I realized I was very surprised. Uh, this is a quote from Blaise Pascal, uh, a, a, a famous scientist, philosopher, almost a Renaissance uh, uh, man. Uh, he said that uh, there is a, and he said, he spoke of this uh, almost 500 years ago, and he said, there is a God-shaped vacuum. He sends a void within him, like a missing jigsaw puzzle. He just missed one piece. So he couldn't see the whole picture of his life. He said, there is a vacuum, a void in the heart of each man, including all of us, uh, which cannot be satisfied by, by any created thing. It cannot be satisfied by good GPAs, cannot be satisfied by entertainment, going to concert or um, good job, high salary. It can only, because this vacuum has a particular shape. This shape is a God-shaped vacuum. So this is a very interesting uh, utterance. It's like a, 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 a puzzle. A jigsaw puzzle, it has a particular shape. You, you can put an arbitrary shape in, the, in there, but only by God. So we can only be satisfied by God. And I can, uh, I want to share with you this, uh, my experience and the good news that uh, 30 some years ago, 33 years ago, when I turned to Lord Jesus, in fact, uh, Pascal said, made known through Jesus Christ, who is God becoming man. He's both God and man. And uh, 33 years ago, when I turned to him and received him, and at that moment, well, I, I just start to feel, wow, that, 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 that sense of peace, of satisfaction, I never experienced before. Seems like my search, my longing, or all my questions became 
uh, somehow mysteriously ans answered at that moment. And uh, um, well, we talk about light, ab about uh, the physical light a lot. And later I realized, this is in the Bible, that uh, once we receive Jesus Christ, then he spoke, he revealed that he is light. He can shine in us. So uh, I, I share with you two verses. One is uh, John 1, 4, 5. It says, in him, in Jesus Christ was the life. And th this life here is not our natural life. It's not the, 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 the life we received from our parents, our human life. This life is the eternal, divine, um, perfect, uncreated life of God. And once we receive this life into us, life become life is the light of man. Without this life, you be walking in, in, in darkness. But uh, with, the, with this life, it start to shine forth as light. Light shines in the darkness. And the John 8, 12, Jesus Christ said again, and he said, I am the light of the world. This world, in fact, is full of darkness. Outside is darkness. In spite of all the four generation of LED lighting plus the sunlight, but in fact, it's a lot of darkness. And uh, but uh, Jesus Christ, he, through his life, it becomes the light. And if we follow him, we will no longer walk in darkness, but we will have the light of life. This was really great, great, great news. It, it changed my, my, my life. And uh, without this, uh, the light of life, we don't even know our, our true conditions. And we, we, um, we have no idea. And we, we sometimes in the academic uh, field, I think we unknowingly we try to impress uh, people, and uh, we have a we're full of uh, I guess we say egos, right, or the, the 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 pride, very very high self esteem. This kind of things we took for granted, but it's only under the light we start to see. Oh wow, these are very childish. Even sometimes a very. Um, just, just, just some, some things not, not positive. It's, a, it's, it's all, almost evil. And the, but the, with the light start to shine, we start to see our true situation. And then this is a good news to all of us, to, to the, to the whole mankind. And uh, um, well, um, in, in school and in society, there are a lot of man-made light. Okay, so I listed at the, at the bottom can be culture, religions, uh, teaching you to behave in certain way, to 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 to, to share the credit, education, philosophy, ethics, self improvement. In the U.S., we used to call this uh, chicken soup for the for, for the soul. Positive thinking, these things, but the Bible clearly tells us these are fire brands, like this artificial a torch that we surround ourselves, try to produce some kind of enlightenment, but uh, in fact, uh, we will end up lying down in torment. We cannot save ourselves. My experience is I couldn't, I couldn't help myself through doing research, through a teaching, any of this, but, uh, the life of God can save us. And not only so, um, in, the title, in, the, in, in the title of, of, of my presentation, I, I, I use the word to enlighten all that they may see. And this is from Ephesians 3, 9 uh, in, in, uh, in the Bible. This is a marvelous verse to enlighten all that they may see what the economy of the mystery is, which throughout the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things. So uh, th this this verse, in fact, what I want to share the good news is uh, 
we can all, once we receive the life of God, we read the Bible, we, we pursue with fellow Christians, we start to see God's purpose. We start to see God's desire that's hidden in him. But God wants to enlighten all of us. And his purpose is that for all of us to receive his life and we to know him, to love him, to serve him together. And we come in together and become the church. And we, 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 we can express God at different locations, localities in Hong Kong, in New Haven, in Boston, in Chicago, in Shanghai, in, 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 in Berlin. And then this invisible God can be expressed by us together connected, enjoying the life of God. This is a great, 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 uh, really a, a great view, a, a, a great vision. So the, my, my last slide here is, uh, or, or the, the second to the last is, uh, uh, well, um, life, I feel it can be like a, 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 a giant garden maze. And you may feel today, well, after this presentation, I have a few meetings and I, I still need to write proposals. And sometimes we feel we are in a maze and uh, uh, we, we don't see. Uh, it's hard to, to, to see uh, what's out there and what, 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 what's the, the, the goal. And we have a, a lot of uh, obligation, pressures. Uh, but if you receive the life of God, and then you start to under his, understand his plan. Then you start to see life in a different way. You, even though you're still in a, in a maze, uh, you're still probably in somewhere in, in this giant maze, but it, you start to understand the bigger picture. And uh, I use this description. I think uh, David and uh, Carolyn, they, they use this. I try to translate into English. We Christians, uh, we live in the present. We live in the present moment. I, I still continue to teach, continue to do research, to publish. But I'm I'm so happy that uh, the meaning of my life is not a Yale professor or uh, a, a a a scientist or simply a a a good uh, a good father, a, a good husband, and any of this. We live. We strive to live in all the condition, but because we have a life and the light in us, we have a view of eternity in our, in, in our daily, ordinary walk. And that makes our life full of meaning. And uh, you can also receive this light of life. Just invite him. And uh, John 1, 12 and 13 made it very clear. You just... Tell the Lord you want to receive him into you, into your heart as light, as life. Then you can start this journey and the light will start to rise in your, in, in your being. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Uh, it's uh, well, a little bit over time and thank you for your, your attention. And I, I, I really, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that I have a time to, to share this with you. Uh, so thank you.